Last week I released a video discussing why there is only one Muslim billionaire in Malaysia, while most of the others are Chinese. If you haven't watched it yet, I suggest doing so before this video for better context. In that video, I raise the question, are Muslims in Malaysia incapable of creating wealth in their own country? I explored various reasons for this, especially those related to the challenges ethnic Malays face, including cultural and religious factors. However, many Malays responded arguing that there are indeed Muslim billionaires, they just don't declare their wealth publicly. They suggested that these billionaires are primarily Malay political leaders and kings. And since their fortunes are often tied to corruption, they prefer to keep things hidden. Some even claimed that elite political families are far wealthier than Malaysia's Chinese billionaires. Now, while it's possible that corrupt leaders may be richer than Malaysia's wealthiest Chinese, the question remains, can they hide their wealth forever? And can their descendants publicly declare it down the line without repercussions? In this video, I'll break down why, despite the secrecy, the Chinese in Malaysia are still visibly wealthier than Malays. To start, Forbes bases its list of billionaires on publicly available data. They confirm wealth by evaluating public companies and declared assets. If someone doesn't disclose their holdings or their companies aren't listed, they won't appear on the list. This applies to Chinese businessmen in Malaysia as well. There could be many who haven't revealed the full extent of their wealth. Next, let's discuss Malaysia's kings. For those unfamiliar, Malaysia has a unique monarchy system with nine hereditary rulers, one of whom is elected every five years to serve as the national king. The current king, Ibrahim Iskandar of Johor, is estimated to have a fortune of around $5.7 billion. Additionally, the Sultan of Pahang is also believed to be extremely wealthy, potentially a billionaire. Given that these sultans control entire states, their wealth is no surprise. It's safe to assume that most of Malaysia's sultans are at least multimillionaires, if not billionaires. Now, let's dive into Malaysia's political elite, who are often considered the wealthiest in the country. Among them, Mahathir Mohamad stands out as perhaps the most powerful and wealthiest. Allegations suggest his family's wealth could be around 45 billion, over four times that of Robert Kuok, Malaysia's richest Chinese billionaire, who has 11 billion dollars. Many believe Mahathir's children are billionaires themselves. Serving as prime minister for 22 years, followed by another two-year term, Mahathir's tenure saw significant scandals, like the Perwaja Steel Affair, through which he's believed to have misappropriated large sums of money. Najib Razak, another former prime minister, has already been convicted for corruption and is currently serving time in prison. He too is believed to have amassed a fortune through misuse of power during his nine-year term, possibly making him a billionaire. Daim Zainuddin, another key figure, has been accused of corruption and is often cited as another billionaire politician. These political elites, along with numerous bureaucrats, are thought to be hiding vast sums of wealth, potentially amounting to multi-million or even billion-dollar fortunes that remain unreported. At this point, it seems likely that some of Malaysia's political leaders are significantly wealthier than the richest Chinese businessmen in the country. However, it's essential to acknowledge a critical point. Even many Malays who argue that there are numerous wealthy Malay billionaires admit that their fortunes stem from corruption. They don't support the corruption carried out by their leaders, despite sharing the same ethnicity or religion. The harsh reality is that the line between political leaders and mafias is razor thin. In many ways, political leaders are just mafias who have convinced the public that their criminal activities are somehow beneficial to the nation. I've previously made a video explaining why mafias rarely remain rich in the long run. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend it, as it sheds light on the similarities between mafias and political leaders. Both operate under the same fundamental principles except one is sanctioned by the law. Now, let's delve into the expenditures of political leaders. A common misconception is that all the corrupt money goes straight into their pockets, but this isn't entirely the case. Much of that money is funneled into various channels. It's spread out among other government officials, coalition members, opposition parties, and even bureaucrats. To cover up their corrupt dealings, politicians must also pay off powerful media outlets, loyal supporters, and even mafia groups. There are immense expenditures in areas often overlooked by the public. Just like mafias, political leaders invest their ill-gotten gains in assets under other people's names. But in order to safeguard these investments, they need to stay in power. Staying in power, however, is extremely costly. 
Take elections, for instance. They are overwhelmingly expensive. Politicians have to distribute money to campaign staff, their supporters, and the general public to secure votes. Businessmen, who often finance political campaigns, expect a hefty return on their investment. Even when political leaders attempt to hide their wealth in offshore accounts in tax havens, such as Singapore, Panama, or the Cayman Islands, they still have to pay substantial commissions to guarantee secrecy. In the Mafia world, most members meet their demise at the hands of their own allies or family members. Similarly, in politics, many leaders fall victim to conspiracies orchestrated by their closest allies. For example, Mahathir Mohammed famously ousted Anwar Ibrahim and vice versa, demonstrating how treachery is commonplace in the political landscape. Malaysia, despite being a democratic nation, experiences fierce political battles, even with the Barisan National Coalition maintaining a tight grip on power for six decades. The constant changes in the monarchy and political leadership only add to the instability. As Malaysia has a constitutional monarchy, it's natural that the kings don't want political leaders to overshadow them in terms of wealth or influence. While the parliament may hold more power constitutionally, the monarchy still carries weight, especially when it comes to wealth and status. It's highly likely that Malaysia's sultans don't appreciate political leaders amassing fortunes that could rival their own. As a result, the monarchy may actively work behind the scenes to prevent political leaders from accumulating too much wealth. For instance, current King Iskandar of Johor, alongside Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, is taking steps to prevent former political leaders from hiding their wealth. They appear to be focused on recovering the hundreds of billions that have vanished from the government's coffers into offshore accounts. Even though billions of dollars have been stashed away in tax havens like Singapore, Switzerland, and the British Virgin Islands, efforts are being made to bring that money back to Malaysia. In fact, countries such as the U.S. and Singapore have already repatriated billions linked to the 1MDB scandal, which occurred during Najib Razak's tenure as prime minister. International cooperation, anti-money laundering laws, and greater financial transparency are gradually eroding corrupt leaders' ability to hide their wealth. Under laws like the U.S.'s Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, FCPA, and similar anti-corruption measures, it's becoming increasingly difficult for corrupt politicians to hide their fortunes for the long term. If proven guilty of corruption, they risk facing asset freezes or even extradition under international law. This is precisely why political leaders are so desperate to remain in power. They need to protect their wealth. However, staying in power is not cheap, as it requires vast amounts of money to be funneled into various channels at different levels of government. Another point to consider is that business carries inherent risks due to factors such as changing environments, technology shifts, and other external forces. Just because corrupt politicians invested their black money in a business at some point doesn't mean that wealth automatically multiplied over time. Many businesses face significant losses and most fail in the long term. It's unrealistic to assume that all corrupted money simply sits in an elite politician's account continuously growing without setbacks. It's also important to emphasize that wealth is typically created by serving people, not by exploiting them. Entrepreneurs, industrialists, and business people become wealthy by providing value and can openly declare their fortunes. In contrast, political leaders, bureaucrats, and mafias accumulate wealth by plundering resources from the people, and, for that reason, they can never fully declare their riches. Now imagine both groups lose all their wealth and are forced to start from scratch. If that were to happen, which family would bounce back faster, Robert Kuwak's or Mahathir Mohammed's? It's highly likely that Kuwak's family would become billionaires again within a decade, while Mohammed's family would be largely forgotten. This is because business people like Kuwak generate wealth through innovation and creation, while corrupt politicians like Mahathir accumulate wealth through plundering what already exists Entrepreneurs can always rebuild their fortunes regardless of location, but corrupt leaders require systems and laws that facilitate their theft. This concept relates to what theorists call cultural capital and human capital, both of which cannot be confiscated by the government or any authority. The Chinese community in Malaysia, for instance, has built up a strong cultural capital around business acumen, which the Malay elite often lack. This is why the wealthiest Chinese families created their fortunes through legitimate enterprise, while many of the wealthiest Malay leaders became rich through corruption.
Even if Malay leaders secretly hold more wealth than the richest Chinese, that wealth is always at risk, while the Chinese are generally in a safer, more advantageous position. There's a fundamental reason for this. Chinese business people can invest and grow their wealth anytime, anywhere, passing it down from generation to generation. Conversely, the descendants of corrupt Malay leaders may find themselves impoverished once they lose power. If corrupt politicians are proven guilty, their assets can be frozen, and they may face extradition even if they attempt to hide their wealth abroad. It's just a matter of time before these leaders pass away. And when that happens, we'll see what remains of their family fortunes. Even now, it's possible that these leaders don't hold nearly as much wealth as Malaysians imagine. They can't simply flee to wealthy countries with all their stolen assets, as they could still face extradition if found guilty. Therefore, they must continuously spend large sums of money to stay in power till they die.